Can you tell us a little bit about QA Symphony? How do you go to market? If you think about uh, business today, almost every business has a software component to their business. Actually, um, we would say almost every business is actually a software company, even if they're not traditionally defined as a software company. Think about some of our customers like Nordstrom, like Office Depot. I mean, if their e-commerce platforms don't work, if their shopping carts don't work, their business doesn't work. So we provide tools that help the people within an organization do a better job and a faster job of testing the applications that are really critical to those businesses to be su successful. So is it an enterprise play or is it just B2B to different developer groups within organizations? So our customers actually, they range from a small mom and pop building a website or has a shopping cart to large global enterprises like Amazon, Dell, Samsung, Cisco. So we really have a, a good range of customers, but I think our focus overall is, is the enterprise. And we have a, a really sturdy platform for enterprise software testers. We try to go into companies where they have 50 plus testers, because that's really where we see our product adding the most value. Is it tough marketing, doing B2B marketing to that audience? It all goes back to understanding the audience, understanding who they are, understanding what makes them tick, understanding really um, how to position your product effectively to them. Where are they going for information? What information is valuable to them? What we found with the software testing audience is that they are very hungry for information, they're very hungry for content, and overall they're underserved. So we this year started doing a webinar program for our customers and we had no idea how many people would show up. The first webinar we did, we had almost 3,500 people register and then about 2,000 showed up for the webinar. So we said, all right, we're onto something here. These people are really hungry for content and they're not getting enough of it from whatever the trade publications are, the trade shows they go to. So that's been a core part of our strategy is feeding them with that really high quality content and keeping them engaged with our brand and, and really filling up the top of the funnel with leads. That gives us a little bit of how do you market to developers. Can you talk a little bit about your own career, your own experience? You've, you've come from a much larger company into what is a, a maturing startup. You know, my career path has been really unconventional in, in a lot of ways. You know, I'm a, a former ad agency guy and, and um, I was very fortunate earlier in my career to work at some great advertising agencies and work on some really great clients like uh, Procter & Gamble's Tide brand, like Volvo. Uh, and, and those were really exciting brands to be a part of and I think helped me build a, a really good foundation for growth. When I went client side, I kind of made the transition from B2C to B2B, getting first with Auto Trader and then with PGI and now with QA Symphony. I've always worked either for big companies or with big companies on the agency side. I've always been lucky to be in these roles where I can be very creative, very entrepreneurial within big organizations. And I've found that when I'm happiest in my work is when I am rolling up my sleeves and doing the work and building things. You know, I found that, you know, I work really well in chaotic, crazy, disorganized kind of places. The best opportunity for that, I thought, was probably more in a startup environment than in just a big company environment. So that led me to my job at QA Symphony. In terms of the startup world, you know, when you jumped into that, the startup space, what surprised you the most? Mm -hmm. So when I jumped into the startup space, you know, I knew I was coming into an environment where there wasn't a lot of foundation poured from a marketing perspective, and I'd have to do that work. You know, I was coming into an environment where uh, it was maybe a little bit younger than uh, you know I'm used to. When you come out of the enterprise, you get used to people who are having maybe a higher level of sophistication when it comes to their just their, their knowledge and their experience. And here, I mean, you know, we have salespeople who this is their first sales job. And you constantly have to remind yourself that. And you're like, no, I need to really help these guys with messaging and collateral and um, coaching them on how to be more effective salespeople, how to present the value proposition. Are there any tips for marketers in startups that you, you'd like to share? It's still all about, you know, the people. Um, and you know, and that really goes for anyone, whether you're in a big company or a small company. When you're at a big company uh, and you have a bigger team, you have some high performers, you have some low performers, and it all kind of evens out. You know, and hopefully you're above you're above average. Um, whereas in a startup, the, the people are essential. You know, you can't make a bad hire. 
right? You can't have a low performer just kind of like lingering around for a long time. I have uh, two people on my team, and then I also have a really good agency network that we use for things that we can't do, either skills that we don't have or just to overflow work that we can't get to. That's what I call like the people stack. You know, there's the tech stack and then there's the people stack. But I think it's that people stack that is the most important piece. And if you have the right people on your team, there's really nothing you can't do. The second part is focus. That for me is one of the hard things. You know, when you go from a company where you have a lot of resources and you have a lot of people on your team, you can do a lot of stuff. That doesn't mean you should do a lot of stuff, but generally you could take on lots of different projects. Whereas in a startup, you can quickly get derailed if you go down the wrong path or if you try to take on too much too soon. And I mean, marketers have to ask themselves when they're at a startup, what is broken and what can I fix now? Yeah. And I will say usually, even if the brand is not what you want, be careful before biting that one off because it's really hard to make a brand change. Change out all your collateral, all your logos. In general, what startups need, they need revenue. And where do you get revenue from lead generation? So I think you know, focusing on activities that are outside of lead generation um, are probably gonna be a mistake, especially when you're new into a startup. Do you have any tips on working with your agency or how do you get your mo the most out of your agencies? When I joined QA Symphony, we had a, a three agencies on board at that time and over my first three months, we ended up firing them all because we just weren't working well together. I need agencies who are very fast. I mean, that, that's point number one, especially in a startup. So I will actually sacrifice maybe some strategy for speed. So I needed an agency that would be fast, that would be nimble, and also that wasn't gonna lock me into like a big retainer. That, that's a, a real mistake I think um, companies make, especially small companies. You just can't afford these monthly hits of $10,000 or more. Especially, you may not use the agency in a given month because you have other priorities and then you're still paying the $10,000, then there's always exit fees, and it ends up getting very expensive. What marketers need to do is they need to find the right agency that works for them. And the other part, you know, when with me working with the agencies, we eliminated actually layers of project management from our agency stack, um, and that's been great. So we could spend money on the creative or the writing or the ideation. That's great. It's, it's really nice to have you. Is there anything else you wanted to add to the talk today? You know, I think for, for marketers, especially marketers in a startup, you know, you're not gonna have big budgets, right? And you have to be very smart with your spend. And so, you know, if you, if you work at like a Coke, you have you know, millions of dollars to spend. The millions of dollars are building the brand, right? Whereas at a startup, you know, as the CMO of a startup, as the marketing leader of a startup, you are the chief Kool-Aid drinker, right? Like you have to be the brand guy. You kind of encompass the brand. You have to be kind of the face of your brand. You know, you have to be the guy who's getting the t-shirts and you're, 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 you're the most excited about the brand. You know, you wanna create in a startup that kind of Kool-Aid culture where people just love the company. We make software, right? People are buying software from us, but they're buying software from us and because we're people, you know, they're not just gonna, they're not going online and doing a credit card transaction, they're talking to the person. And, you know, we don't want customers who have to work with us. We want customers who want to work with us and like to work with us. And we want customers who feel like, wow, this is, this is a really cool company I'm involved with. And I think, I think marketing's role is to really drive that, that brand.